Welcome friends and God's people to the Spirit of Grace Hour on TV. I am your regular host, Dr. Nick Mbezwe Daniel. In today's teaching, we'll be looking at God's Word about how believers can fully enjoy a walk with Him. The Christian walk is a relationship between a believer as a son or daughter. The Bible actually uses the word son for both male and female. And God as a father. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 7, the Bible says, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that we might have adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth his spirit in your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore you are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, you are a heir of God through Jesus Christ. The relationship between man and God cost God a lot to establish. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 describes God as immortality that dwelleth in a light which no man can approach. So ordinarily, man cannot relate to God. But, but God decided to make it a lot easier by stepping down and coming in form of a man. The Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So God made it easier for us to relate with him on a daily basis. Through Jesus Christ. And you find out that this same sacrifice, this same trouble God took to make man, to make himself available to man. This, all the trouble that Christ took to go to the cross. Many people are still not aware that God is available for a relationship. He says in verse 8 and 9 of the same Galatians 4, He says, How be it then, when you do not God, you did service unto them which were by nature not gods. But now, after you have known God, or rather known of God, why turn you again to weak and beggarly elements? We are unto you desire to be again in bondage. How you know God, how you view God's nature, determines how you relate with Him. For some, they see God as a genie in a bottle. Maybe if you rub Him on the right side properly, you get your results. Some, they get prayer points and they use it like a talisman. They do all night prayers, quoting as many prayer points as possible, and they believe with that, God has been activated and God will work. Some others see God as a capone, a mafia boss, whose God will be appeased with money, with sacrifices, with tithes and offerings to avoid trouble. Some others think of God as having placed an angel standing by the book of life. So when you sin, the angel erases your name from the book of life. And then when you confess your sins, he enters it back again. But God is not so. I say again, God is not so. Jesus is the express image of God. What you see in Jesus that's God for you. Whatever you don't see in Jesus cannot be God. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. In Colossians 1 15 it says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And of this fullness we have. Praise the Lord. Jesus himself said to John, to Philip, 
He said, anyone who sees the Father has seen me. John chapter 14 verse 9. Let us pray. I thank you, O God, that you have hidden things from the wise of the world, but you have revealed them unto your own, unto the babes who will yield themselves to your word. Lord, we receive light from your word this moment as we go into this teaching today. Have your way. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. The question we are asking today is, how do I, or how do you as a believer relate to God? There are two distinct gods, two distinct presentations of God by the Bible. The same God has been presented in two different ways. I will call them testament. One is the Old Testament and one is the New Testament. It's not that God is different in each in of the testaments. But the word testament refers to relationship. How God related before Jesus Christ went to the cross. That's the Old Testament. And how God related after Jesus went to the, Christ and to the cross and rose from the dead. That's the New Testament. Under the Old Testament, God demanded righteousness as a basis for relationship. He demanded it from the people. In the New Testament, God also demanded right, demands righteousness, but in this the New Testament, God supplies the righteousness by himself. In the Old Testament, we look at Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. God demanded the righteousness. He said, Thou shalt not bow thyself to any other God. For I am a, God, a jealous God, visited iniquity unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. That's a demand. But in the New Testament, we see in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, God says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. I say that again. In Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, God supplied righteousness by saying, by pledging, by guaranteeing. He said, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. The same God who said I will visit punishment on the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. It's the same God who says, their iniquities, their sins, I will remember no more. The difference is Christ and the cross. Praise the Lord. In John, 1 John chapter 4 verse 10, the Bible says, Hearing is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave his son to become a propitiation for our sins. Propitiation means that the price for reconciliation has been fully paid by Jesus Christ. Therefore, I do not have to be afraid of God's wrath anymore. But rather, I have entered into an intimate affair with God. I have entered into an intimate affair with God. Religion is man's effort to please God and dwells upon do's and don'ts. But the relationship, the new relationship, is that God has come down to dwell in us and we in Him. And we have a wonderful relationship. Whereby the Bible says He sent forth His Spirit, crying out in our heart, saying, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. Now, this status. Apostle Peter calls it election. He said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. First Peter chapter 1 verse 2. God himself shows by himself, designed the plan to elect us into a state of righteousness to relate with him one on one. So how do we enjoy this relationship that we presently have with Christ? That's the question. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2, Paul is saying, 
For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. He wrote to the Corinthian church. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. In other words, we have been espoused to Christ in a relationship awaiting the marriage feast of the Lamb. So right now, in common day parlance, you can say we are dating Christ. We are in a dating relationship with God. So how do you enjoy this present relationship? That's what we are dealing on today. You will be surprised how many people have not understood the right relationship with God. And they are Christians. In a recent poll done in California about Christians, most of the people polled said about Christians, said Christians are people against everything. They're against wearing this, they're against wearing that, they're against eating this, they're against drinking that, they're against going here, they're against everything. They're against everything. They see Christians, majority of the people who see Christians as people who are in protest of one thing or the other. The second highest returns describe Christians as people who have a lot of meat. They meet a lot. They have one thing or the other. One thing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They have something to do. But these are distorted impressions of Christians. Which are not far from the truth in any case. But the correct polling result should have read, Christians are an extension of God. Believers are in an affair with God. Because Christ changes the equation. By him we have unrestricted access to God. We are in a relationship with Christ. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 2. It says, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Wherein we stand. And rejoice in the hope of glory of God. Wherein we stand here means. That the moment you get this revelation of justification by the cross of Christ. This revelation of a new relationship with God, you will stand. You will stand on it. It's a platform to stand boldly with assurance to relate with God. Which is what many people are missing. And when you do that, the Bible says your joy will be full. So in Philippians chapter 3 verse 3, the Bible says, For we, all the believers, we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, rejoicing in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. We are already in the circumcision. We have already been brought into righteousness. What they use physical circumcision to achieve, Christ achieved for us on the cross. So we are the circumcision. We have the confidence that we are the circumcision now of God through Christ. And we worship God in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus, our Savior. And we have no confidence in any man's flesh, including our own. In other words, we have no confidence in what we do or what we do not do as the basis for a relationship with God. Praise the Lord. We see that it cost God a lot to establish this close relationship with us. He took Jesus dying on the cross. And the Bible says that through Christ's sacrifice, we have obtained a direct access to God in a direct relationship. When you receive this grace, when you have received this grace, this light of understanding, the Bible says you stand strong in faith with the full assurance of God's love. So to enjoy God fully, we must do a few things. Number one is, we must experience a true conversion. I use the word again. We must experience a true conversion, which is regeneration. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That is to say, you are regenerated, you are a new creation. 
In 1 Corinthians 15, 45, the Bible says, And so it is written, The first Adam became a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit, that is Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, God says, And the Lord will circumcise your heart, and the heart of your children, to love God, the Lord thy God, with all your heart and with all your soul. So God's method of preparing men for relationship in the Old Testament was circumcision of heart. That's why the, the, the Jews prided in the fact that they were the circumcision. But today we are the circumcision of God. But in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 10, under the New Covenant, under the New Testament, God said, I will make the house of Israel, after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their mind, and I will write them in their hearts. In another place, he said, I will take away the heart of stone, the word that he used to circumcise, and give them a heart of flesh, and I will write my words on their heart, and I will be to them a God, they shall be to me a people. So, it requires a true repentance, a true regeneration, a true conversion to be able to enjoy a relationship with God. The second one is that there must be true repentance. Repentance is not repentance from sin. Repentance from sin was the Old Testament preached by John the Baptist, preparing men for Christ. But the true repentance today, according to Paul's gospel, in Acts chapter 20, verse 21, he said, How I kept back nothing from you, testifying both to the Jews and to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance, true repentance today is after you are born again, after you have received Christ, you need to change your mind about how you see God. You need to change your mind towards God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to this, he said, to be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. You need to see God from a new perspective. You need to see yourself as an object of God's love. You need to see yourself as a right standing with God. You need to see God as Father. Praise the Lord. Many confuse repentance from sin as salvation. But this is ignorance. Because if you base your salvation on repentance from sin, it means that once you go back, any time you, you find yourself committing the same sins that you did, you will begin to doubt your salvation. So repentance from sin is different from repentance towards God after you are saved, which is the second condition for enjoying a good relationship with God. The third and very important condition or attribute is that you have to mature in the way you feel towards God. I say that again. You have to mature in the way you feel towards God. God owes you nothing. All he could ever do for you, he has done in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, according to, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. God has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. And not just God. No man owes you anything. No pastor owes you anything. So you need to mature in the way you relate to people. Wrong expectations from God makes believers sometimes get offended at God. And I don't know how far you want to go with that. There was this story of a lady told by a pastor a lady who accosted him after preaching in a particular church. And the lady called the pastor and said, I said, Pastor, I respect you, but I want you to help me warn your God. He promised me a husband, and I waited for a long time. I'm giving God up to September. Then I can backslide and marry anybody I want to marry. And you see, this lady probably believes she has been let down by God. Somebody must have told her that if you make this vow or you make this pledge, that God is going to do this. And she, she, has, she saw God in an accord with her. And having done her own part, she's holding God to the accord. But this is not the way God operates. 
So many Christians are led down by one wrong teaching, one wrong doctrine or the other. The fourth one is that you must develop, transform and renew your mind in godliness. You must develop and realign your mind in true godliness. You need to be able to draw from what Christ has done, not from what you think. God has made a lot of things available for you as a child of God. The Bible says, to an inheritance, we have been called to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and faded not away, reserved for us in glory. And we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Kept, let me emphasize the word kept. First Peter chapter 3, chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. He said, We are kept means God has kept us. The way a man keeps a mistress, God has kept us. Reserved, we kept us unto salvation. He's guiding us. He's guiding us and guiding us to present ourselves to Him, to Himself. On the last day, praise the Lord. Number five, He says, study the Word of God, meditate upon it, give yourself wholly to it. Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, take heed about the doctrine, give yourself to it. That your profiting may appear. Any believer that does not study the word of God is, is shooting himself at the foot. The next one is spend time with people who enjoy God more than you. There are people who enjoy God more than you. And you know them. These are people to be around. All the time. When you have friends who say, who tell you some, from time to time, say, Leave God aside of this business. Let's talk man to man. Put God aside. That's not the kind of friend to be around. Praise the Lord. There are people who love God. People who walk with God. People who love God more than you do. These are people to be around so that you can enjoy a relationship with God. Take the trouble to learn more of God. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you will. You can ask God anything. Nothing is too big to ask God. And nothing is too small. God is more than able. And Jesus said, when you receive these things, He said, Hitherto have you asked nothing. John 16, 24. Ask that you might receive and that your joy might be full. He said, if my words abide in you and you, you abide in me, you will ask whatever you want. And you receive. It's not as a condition. He's only describing the process. The process is that you abide in Christ and his words abide in you so that you can believe them. Praise the Lord. He said they shall lay their hands upon the sick. The sick will recover. You need to believe that. Sanctify the Lord always in your heart. First Peter 3.15 But sanctify God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asked you the reason for your home. In other words, just what did Jesus do for you? You have to put it at the front end of your eyes all the time. What did Jesus do for you? The Bible calls it a mystery. Colossians 1, 20, 27, it says, Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. To whom God will make known what are the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. God lives in you. That is the mystery. The plan is to relate better with you by His Spirit. And the Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So it is ignorance for you to be praying for good things to happen to you. Because God lives in you and the world is waiting for you to happen. It's not good things to happen to you, but for you to happen. I say that again. The Bible says, in Romans 8, 19, he said, The earnest of creation awaits the manifestations of the sons of God. So you are not praying like the world, like other religions, for good things to happen, or for bad things not to happen. Because you carry God, and wherever you come, God happens. Good things happen, praise the Lord. That's a better perspective. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Luke 12, 32, he said, Fear not, little flock, 
for it is your father's good will to give you the kingdom. Look at yourself squarely in the mirror and say, I am the next thing to happen. No matter the circumstance, no matter the opposition, you have been programmed to happen. It may take a while, but it's going to happen. Keep at it. Your right to manifest is guaranteed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus wants a relationship with you. That is why he's inside you today. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This broadcast is sponsored by Grace and Fool Missionary Association. GIFMA, G-I-F-M-A for short, an international Bible mission group. We are grateful for your audience today. We also welcome your comments, inquiries, and any other form of feedback. Our contact is as follows. Website, www.gifma.us. Email, bibleteacher at gifma.us. For prayer or counseling, please dial 346-754-0720. Follow us on our Facebook page at Gifma. If you're a gospel minister, you can register for membership there and get mission support. Please tune in same time next week and a repeat broadcast on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. If you have been blessed by this broadcast, don't forget to send us an email with your name and address. You will receive free books, DVDs, and other materials to help you grow in grace. Next session, we'll be looking at Enjoying God Part 2, which I'm looking at, how do I enjoy God still? Please keep a date with me. Next time, invite your friends and family to feast on God's word.